Okay, so let's go and look at how this federated workflow works to benefit us when we get to kind of a drawing production scenario. So I'm going to switch over and um, go to sheets.dgn. And again, this is going to be um, another file here that I'm opening. And the purpose of this one is going to be to create my plan sheets. In the past, uh, like with inroads, you might have actually done your sheet generation in the 3D design file where your design elements were. So this is probably could be uh, quite different than what you've done in the past. And so I've just opened sheets.dgn. And when I do a fit view, you see it has everything already referenced into it. You'll notice that I haven't done anything to this file yet. And it already has the terrains that I imported here at the beginning of the call. And that's because I already had my container file set up to look at those uh, start 2D and start 3D DGNs that I use. So again, if we set up our container files right, then additions by other team members will kind of show up here automatically in our container files. So that shows one benefit there. So what I'm going to do here is just um, talk a little bit about how the best practices on kind of a drawing production workflow here. So I'm in a separate DGN here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go create some plan sheets. So I'm going to go to name boundary and I'm going to do some civil plan sheets. I want to make them a little bit bigger because I have a small project here. So let's do 250 in length, and 50 feet on either side. OK, so here I'm just going to take the defaults. I'll just create two sheets out here. We'll do that one and that one. And we will go ahead and create the drawing. OK, so yeah, a lot of white space here. My scale's off a little bit, but that's OK. I don't really want to talk about sheets. I really want to get to the drawing model and talk about the, the concept behind this, which is new when you get to the world of Open Rose Designer. Um, so what I've done here when I created the name boundary, it created the name boundary back in the 2D design model, and it referenced that in here to the 2D drawing model. You know, again, if you're like me, you grew up in the world of inroads and Geopack. We were doing our annotation, our sheeting, everything in that 3D design model. But really, we want the design models to truly stay design, right? We want those 2D design models to have our 2D horizontal geometry, we want it to have all of that, all those corridor handles and everything we're using to design the corridor. We want the 3D design model to show just the 3D elements of the design. And we don't want to really clutter that up with annotation. So um, kind of the best practice is do your annotation here when you get to the, these 2D drawing models. These are drawing models. They are meant for the drawing and drafting, right? That's kind of what the intention here is. So what I've done is here, I've switched the drawing model. This is the name boundary and it's a saved view attachment. And so let me do a little annotation in here. So I'm just going to annotate element. And um, I'm going to say no on that here. I just want to annotate my main line center line here. So I'm going to reset to complete. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that all of my mainline annotation comes in uh, to my file. And I pick up a couple other benefits. The fact that I'm in a drawing model. I had some drawing model annotation that was here already before I did that. I had the north arrow already placed for me. I had my max line already placed for me. So this is, again, this is kind of the best practice. Let's do our annotation in the 2D drawing models, not back in the design models, um, if possible. There might be scenarios where you want to do that, and it is possible, but, you know, talking about best practices here. Um, and what does that get us? Well, I mean, your first objection might be, well, I don't want to have to go to all 30 plan sheets and hit the element on each one of them. Well, there is an option here when I do element annotation to annotate all elements in the model, and that would pick up my ramps here. And there is also an option to go ahead and do all the drawing models. So what it'll do is it'll scan through every drawing model in this file. It'll look at the elements that are in the drawing model, and it'll annotate them based on how their feature definition was. If I didn't want these ramps to annotate, for example, I would give them a 
feature definition that didn't annotate in plan view. Um, there's a lot of control I can do over that. So, But what this gives me is this gives me my annotation here in a 2D drawing model where it should reside, and it's aware of the rotation of the drawing model. So if I go and let's place a label, let's pull up the civil labeler and place a label real quick. I don't really have any other graphics in my file here, so I'll just label something. Okay, we'll go and do plan points. We'll do a station offset annotation. When I'm placing a label here for rotation, I have view horizontal as an option. So while I'm annotating in this, I know what the rotation of this portion of the alignment is going to be in the final sheet. So I, I can very simply annotate it horizontally in this view there. So I'm going to hit place, identify my baseline. Let's just grab that element there and place. Um, okay. So I annotated my tick mark, but I could annotate any kind of graphic in here. And because, again, this drawing model is already rotated for me, you know, if I snap to the coordinates there, it's sitting at the project coordinates, at the true coordinates of the alignment, then I can do, I can fully do any annotation I want in there. In fact, if I just went over and did the place label command and did just a, just like an XY label, it would pull the correct XY, let's do this, just place XY in there. That's my true XY coordinate from the project. So that's the, all the benefits I'm getting here of doing my annotation in this drawing model. I'm getting true coordinates, it's rotationally aware, and then all that just automatically gets referenced back to my sheet view. So if I go back to the sheet, I see the full annotation that was put in by me and the stuff I was added in later. So again, letting the, the program kind of manage the 2D and 3D for me. My drawing process is a little different than in the past where I'm really doing a lot of the annotation, a lot of the 2D uh, labeling work. I'm doing it actually in the drawing model so that I already know the rotation and it is geolocated, you know, aware of its location and that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, that is a little bit about annotation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.